Hey, Kyle here with winthehouseyoulove.com. Today we're talking about how do you avoid closing costs when you're buying a home. All right, so when you're buying a home, the last thing you wanna do is pay a bunch of fees and a bunch of costs and everything like that. You already have a down payment and you have closing costs as well and people get confused on what the differences are. So I'm gonna show you a couple different strategies you can use to avoid closing costs just know that they uh, they have some trade-offs, right? If you avoid the costs up front, they are gonna get paid in some way. So first let's clear up what the down payment is versus closing costs. Your down payment is the money that you put, that's yours, that you eventually get back, it's equity in the home. Closing costs are things that you pay to other people that uh, are required for you to purchase a property. So for instance, you're gonna pay uh, taxes, uh, you're going to pay insurance, um, you might pay things like an appraisal fee or a credit report fee, you might pay a title company. Um, you have all these costs going in that are required to help you close on a deal. These are in addition to your down payment. So you have the down payment plus closing costs added on top. The problem is most people only budget for the down payment and then closing costs become a surprise. So let's talk about some ways that we can whittle these down a little bit. Something to note first is that closing costs need to be paid in some way. They're going to be paid by somebody or in some way. They don't just disappear, right? I can't get the county to waive the taxes that they have on your home. It just doesn't work like that. So they have to be paid in some way. They don't just go away. So one of the most common strategies is to get the seller uh, to pay the closing costs. And what happens in this is you would negotiate with your realtor how much you want the seller to pay in your closing costs. So for instance, if you had a $100,000 home, you could negotiate maybe 3% of your closing costs. So what would end up happening is the seller would give you $3,000 to pay down your closing costs. So with conventional loans, normally I see this around 3%. With government loans, sometimes you can go up to 6% on something like an FHA loan. I have a, a video on uh, getting seller concessions if you wanna look that up. But basically what people will do is they kind of build in the closing costs to the purchase price. So some people ask, you know, can you wrap closing costs into your loan? You can't, but you can kind of do it in a weird roundabout way. So let's run back to this $100,000 example. Let's say you're purchasing a $100,000 house and you need 3% towards your closing costs. Well, the seller doesn't wanna give up three grand just so you can save money, right? They, they want that money in their pocket. So what you can do is make an offer for 103,000, ask for 3,000 back at closing, and guess what? The seller, nothing effect gets affected to them, right? They don't have to bring any extra costs to the table, and you get the money that you want. Effectively, you financed your closing costs into the purchase. So you're basically taking closing costs and wrapping it into the total purchase price of the home. This is the most common way uh, that I see people pay for closing costs. Okay, another way is to shop lenders. So when you're shopping for lenders, people do this so wrong all the time. Um, and it's really disappointing because I see, I see clients of mine do this and I've lost deals because other lenders quote improperly. So here's, here's the deal. A loan officer should send you a loan estimate when you're, when you're shopping around. And the only thing that's going to differ between lenders is your Section A costs. Section A costs on your loan estimate are what are called origination charges. And these are the charges that the lender requires on the loan. Um, but what I see happen all the time is people are shopping different mortgages, but lender A quotes uh, insurance a lot lower than lender B does. And then a buyer says, I'm gonna go with lender A because their insurance is lower. The lender doesn't provide insurance. You shop for the insurance anyway. The lender's just giving you an idea of what they think it could cost. So just because some person says they think it's gonna be lower, doesn't mean it's gonna be lower with that lender. The lender only changes section A origination charges. So if you do shop, look for those. So what you'll run into are things like an underwriting fee, a processing fee, an admin fee. Uh, you could run into an application fee. Um, what else are you gonna run into? You're gonna run into those types of things along with any points paid on that mortgage. Another one is if you're really trying to cut costs is to not pay points. So points are 1% of the loan amount. So one point is 1% of the loan. So if you have a $100,000 mortgage, one point is $1,000. And what points do is they pay down your interest rate. So it's prepaid interest. So instead of taking a 4% interest rate, maybe you pay one point, and your interest rate is a 3.875%. 
Okay, so you paid $1,000 to lower it uh, to 3.875%. It may or may not be beneficial for you to do that, depending on how long you're gonna be in the home. But if you wanna save money, just don't pay points. Your rate might be higher, but you're saving that money up front, and you can always refinance in the future into something lower when the market changes. Okay, also, uh, you could wrap your costs into the rate. So this works kind of similarly to points in an opposite way. So some people wanna pay money up front to lower the rate, but you could actually increase the rate to receive money at closing. This is what's called a lender credit. Okay, a lender credit is basically where you're going to receive money from the lender in turn for taking a higher interest rate. And sometimes this makes sense to do. So for instance, let's say you had a 4% rate with zero points. You could take a 5% rate and receive maybe $2,000 at closing. So you didn't have to bring $2,000 in closing costs, but you have a higher rate in turn. So when would this make sense? This might make sense if you're using something like an FHA loan. These normally, normally you can get better lender credits with government loans uh, like FHA, USDA, or VA. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult on the conventional side, but uh, you might use it because you're saying, hey, we're gonna use this FHA loan, build up our credit score, and refinance into a conventional anyway. And if that's the case, then we wanna pay as little upfront fees as possible. And so what I would suggest in that scenario is, great, go ahead and take the higher rate, don't pay the costs, refinance, and you'll net better on the other side. Okay, you could also waive an escrow account. Um, I have a video on escrows. I'm gonna have it pop up somewhere on the screen here. Um, but escrows are basically your taxes and insurance. They're set aside in a separate account. It's your money that you eventually get back when you sell the property, but that money just kind of sits and collects dust. Dust And an escrow account can sometimes be one, two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, depending on what your taxes are like. So this is extra money that you're bringing to the closing table that you don't have to if you waive the escrow account. Now, waiving escrows means that you're going to have to manage paying taxes and insurance on your own. It is not that difficult, okay? I'm amazed sometimes at the people who feel like this is a very difficult. It's not. Just setting aside the money that you need for insurance and the money that you need for taxes is not difficult at all. Normally to waive escrows, you need 20% down. However, if you're working with a broker, uh, you can shop with a lender that will only require 5% down. I would highly suggest you waive escrows. And again, I have that video on escrows if you wanna learn more about uh, what goes into escrows and waiving them and how that works. Another option is you could shop your homeowner's insurance. So when you close, um, you're going to have to pay a year of homeowner's insurance up front, depending on the size of your property. This could be a little amount of money or a lot of money. And you wanna make sure that you're finding a good insurance quote. So you wanna have the right blend of solid insurance, but at a, a, a solid price as well. Don't go for just the cheapest because it, it's gonna be harder for that to pay out. Um, but also don't go for the most expensive either because it's a lot of costs that you have to pay. So you get to shop for that and find what works for you. Another one is you can get a gift from a family member or someone who's a close friend for some of those costs. So maybe you don't have the money uh, for, for closing costs, but you have the money for the down payment, you can get a gift for that money uh, to pay those down. Also, if you close at the end of the month, you can save money on prepaid interest. So prepaid interest is uh, basically interest that you pay because your first mortgage payment is skipped when you close on a home. So for instance, if you close on a home in January, your February payment is skipped and your first payment's due March 1st. So what ends up happening is there's this one payment that's missing. So you pay interest to cover uh, that gap here, okay? Um, so what ends up happening is if you close at the end of the month, you normally only have to pay one day of interest. So, but if you close at the beginning of the month, you have to pay that full month worth of extra interest there. So if you close towards the end of the month, you're gonna save probably a couple hundred bucks uh, on your closing costs. You could also choose to have uh, an interest credit, which in this example, Basically what you do, instead of saying having your payment due March 1st, have it due February 1st. So maybe you close mid-January, you close on February, or you, your first payment's due on February 1st, and you get an interest credit, uh, so money back for that interest that uh, you paid early, effectively. Okay, so 
there are a few ways that you can manage your closing costs and take those down. The easiest way is to have the seller pay for it. If the seller won't budge, uh, then that's when you can increase the price to kind of wrap those costs into that a little bit. Well, if you wanna learn more about negotiating closing costs, I have a video right over here. It's gonna help you understand how to negotiate closing costs and figure out the best way uh, to uh, shrink those down if you need to. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.